Greg, cases like the Casey Anthony uh, trial and O.J. Simpson bring to light something that you see and I've seen on a regular basis in our court system, just absolute injustices that, that occur every day. Uh, you know, people I don't think realize how appalling some of these situations are until they see a case like Casey Anthony. Um, you've got some examples of why victims are outraged. And well, now the it's public's outraged too. Well, <laughs> victims get outraged almost every case mm -hmm. uh, because they see that this system is kind of um, stacked against them. I'll give you a, a great example. Um, and we need to look no further than the case of James Dickerson. He was a thief who basically got away with it. Now what about James Dickerson? He was 62 years old uh, at the time he was became the power of attorney for a woman, an elderly woman who suffered from Alzheimer's and she was living in a pretty nice nursing home. Dickerson, as her power of attorney, was able to take care of the woman's financial affairs. Instead, he stole her life savings. He used all of her life savings, over $300,000, to support his own lifestyle and that of his girlfriend. As a result, it came to the bill started come and do and there wasn't any money to pay the bills for the nursing home for the woman in the nursing home and so she had to be moved from this comfortable uh, situation into a much much less desirable one because her savings were gone thanks to this thug uh, and she died shortly after the move you know any kind of a change in circumstances or change in location is pretty traumatic to old folks, especially Alzheimer's patients. Well, this guy Dickerson was charged with stealing $271,000. That was all that we could document in the trial of this case. He pled guilty to, uh, to, and we recommended 10 years in prison. Is that the end of the story? Nope, not by a long shot. Six months later, then C circuit judge Gary Payne released Dickerson from prison on shock probation. Wow. Yeah. The theory of shock probation is that a person who's sent to prison is so shocked by the circumstances they find themselves in prison that they will never misbehave again. Unfortunately, the only people shocked by this sort of sentence are the victims who can't understand how a person who commits this kind of crime that result in being sent to prison can get off so easily. And even that's not the end of this tale. Dickerson was ordered to pay $271,000 to the estate of Sarah Neal. Remember, she died after she had to be moved. <laughs> that was in 1998. Now, in 2011, 13 years later, this yo-yo, Dickerson, is 74 years old. He still owes her estate $240,000. And it'll take him 67 more years to pay the entire amount that he stole. That means he'll be 141 years old um, at that time. We can only hope that he has a good job when he's 141 years old. But if he dies, guess this, if he dies before it's paid back, guess what? It's over. It turns out to be a gift, you see. Um, so, Dickerson is allowed to be freed by the court system, Gary Payne in particular, and he now is required to pay $300 a month, and they take that out of whatever kind of social security mm -hmm. check that he gets. You wanna know why crime victims are ticked off about the system? There you go. You see that all the time. I well, we talked about this restitution thing. Uh, you know, I, I worked a case where over a million dollars was taken, uh, and it's the same deal. It was never paid back uh, from the victim, and. Mm -hmm. 
or to the victim, and the person's out of jail, got shock, shock probation. Um, you know, it, of course, they call these nonviolent crimes, and the fact that this 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 guy took money from this elderly person who died within within months of being moved. You know, you can't go back. You can't charge him related to her death, even though we know dang good and well that probably contributed to her death. Um, it's just a nonviolent property crime. That's right. That's right. And and the thing is, you have to remember the Dickerson case happened before the legislature decided that they were going to water down uh, our uh, property crime laws even more. I mean, now it's even worse. Now it's very likely that he wouldn't even spend that six months in jail. Unfortunately, Officer Don, restitution is so seldom made. It's ordered, but it's so seldom made that I. You know, crime victims of, of these kind of crimes, of financial crimes, t t there's only one message to them, and it's pretty simple. Crime pays. Because if they don't pay the money back, and, and most of them can't, then what the hell? I mean, it's a... There you go. I got another one for you that, that, that curls most people's toes. Um, out in Washington... Washington State. There's a guy who uh, who was charged with making more than a hundred videotapes of his molestations of more than a dozen young boys. He's in custody and as a result of the discovery process, which means you have to turn all of the evidence over to the defense attorney. Well, the defense attorney, this guy wants to represent himself against all of this child molestation uh, charges, so he gets the discovery. What does the discovery include? The videotapes that they that the police seized out in Washington. So and he so, gets to watch all these videos. So this pervert is sitting in jail watching all of these uh, child molestation videotapes that he made as he prepares to represent himself in this thing. Now, so what does the public think about that? Give me a break. That's what they think about that. And it's just, you know, our criminal justice system is stacked. It's just stacked in favor of the defendants and against crime victims. Well, well to the point of being ridiculous, I mean, listen, we, <clears throat> we want to make sure that people get a fair trial. Sure. We want to make certain that uh, that people are found guilty and that they're that they're assumed, uh, presumed to be innocent <coughs> until they're convicted. But at some point, you got to put common sense. A public safety issue pops up here, and a common sense and decency issue is supposed to play. It's not all about technicalities and loopholes. I don't it, think the system was designed to be that way. At least it has to do with consequences for breaking the law. That's what it has to do with. Now, some <coughs> some yard bird steals. A uh, quarter of a million dollars from an old person, and he ends up paying it back at a uh, hundred dollars a month. Well, give me a break, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so, what ends up happening is he wins. Well, the system's given up on punishment. <coughs> I mean, punishment has become a dirty word in our criminal justice system. Uh, the word jail has become a dirty word, the word prison has become a dirty word. Well, we call is it about reform. We call the jail in, in Lexington, Kentucky, community corrections or the detention center. I, of course, prefer to call it jail. Tune in to the following stations every Sunday to hear In Touch with Ray the DA and Officer Don. We hope you enjoyed the show. Stay tuned in for next week's episode.